And we're here. We're the Wrestling Boys. And I said Logan just set up to attention. I'm Goose. I am Logan. But we are the Wrestling Boys, and we are coming to you. We weren't on last Monday because we had what was called, what was that called again? Technical difficulty. Technical difficulty. It usually happens in, 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 in school. You know, we <laughs> yeah, that's enough. <laughs> in school. But but last week we had technical difficulties. He was all, we were all set to go at 4 o'clock, and... Um, and then we were told, no, it looks like nothing's going on. At <laughs> and then I had to walk home. So, okay. so anyway, so we didn't have a chance to give our, our opinions on, on uh, the uh, on NXT TakeOver on the Brooklyn weekend. 4 and, and, so. and so, SummerSlam. So we're going to do that today, give you our, our opinions on some of the things we liked, some of the things we really didn't like. No. Be- before we do, you brought up something that was really interesting, and that is that uh, they, they – they, they, uh, you, you just told me they finished the Mae Young Classic a while back, and, and maybe the, like last month or like the beginning of this month. So they, I can't remember. But so so they, like they finished the Mae Young Classic, ago. and they're they're going to have the the champ. Now I want to say champion. The final match between the, the finals. The finals. They're having the finals at Evolution, which is in October twenty eighth. October twenty eighth. So this is August. This makes, like, no sense. That's, like, <laughs> two months away. Maybe, like, two and a half months, almost three months. How does that make any sense? Uh, I mean... It doesn't. I mean, I know it's a good idea to have the finals at the Evolution pay-per-view, yeah, but right. if you're going to have the finals at the Evolution pay-per-view, you should have the actual tournament closer yeah. to the pay-per-view. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Having it so far away it makes absolutely... No, no sense. It, it, it really doesn't. Uh, who's in the finals? Do you know? Because I don't um, know. I, I, it's I, like, I, um, <laughs> Lo Shirai and um, I can't remember the other. One. Okay, so must I know be, she's one of them. Must not be anybody we, we know or, or no. remember. Okay, um, but I mean, and it's been a while since the tournament actually happened and they revealed the results. So yeah, it's so that's another way to uh, like show you that it's been a while since I did the actual tournament. Cause Could, it, like I would have remembered if it was like, so do you think, do you think maybe they're going to like, they're going to have this little build up to this, you know, this rivalry, because if you think about last year's man classic, the finals were against, of course, Kyrie Sane and, and Shayna, Baszler. Shayna Baszler, which has turned into a pretty good, um, rivalry food for the women's title. Food for the women's title, and um, if you don't already know, I mean, of course, we'll talk about it um, for NXT. But you know, uh, Nick, um, Nikki Cross, Kyrie Sane. I have Nikki Cross in the brain, by the way. Um, but uh, Kyrie Sane has already beaten Shayna Baszler now, a second time to retain yeah. the title. So, but I agree with you. I, it, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. You would think that this would be something that that they would want to. They would want to like televise, um, even as like you know. I, I think back to like March Madness. If you got like sixty four women, I don't know how many women are involved in the Mayhem Classic. Neither do I. But I mean, let's just say that it's, let's just say for you know smiles and giggles that um, <laughs> <laughs> that let's let's just say that there, there's thirty two women in, in, involved in the tournament. You'd want to have something that would lead up to the finals into Evolution if you're really really gonna really really gonna kick off this new pay per view women's only pay per view. This would be one way for you to 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 really promote it, and especially for new young talent for NXT. I I, I agree with you. I don't know well, why they've, they've left it out so far. Well, I wonder what then. Why do they have the G One Climax tournament so far away from Wrestle Kingdom? That's true too. They have that in like July slash August. So whenever they have that in Wrestle Kingdom is at the beginning of January. Mm. So why do they have such a big gap? Is it to like build up momentum for the or, challenger for or, the title to or, make him look like a big or, like or, worthy or, contender for the title? Or a rivalry. Yeah, yeah that's probably what it's, really it's I mean, by Other the way, than that, it really doesn't make sense. By the way, who, so who, won, who, who won the, G, uh, the G1... Classic? For the third time, I believe, the ace, the ace. of New Japan, Hiroshi Tanahashi, beat... I don't remember. <laughs> Maybe it was, it was a, wasn't it Gaido? Hiroki Gaido? 
Or maybe Goto? Goto, Goto. Goto. I'm not sure. Oh, no, it was Kota Ibushi. Kota Ibushi. That's who he beat. Oh, wow. Sorry, it took me a while to remember. It was a while ago again, yeah. so that's why I don't remember. And Kota Ibushi is becoming one of the new um, the new stars yeah. for uh, for New Japan Wrestling. I'm wondering if they're giving maybe Tanahashi a last push, you know, before he... He retires. Before he retires, because, I mean, if you figure, he's been the ace for how long? I mean, he's been... For, I don't know. For a long time. I mean, I, mean so. I, I only started watching New Japan a few months ago, so... And so, and, and we've been watching more and more... Um, wrestling videos on YouTube and how uh, they're starting to really, really compare New Japan Wrestling to WWE and, and things. How that, New Japan is like a thousand times better than know, WWE. Where, where WWE can learn. And, and, well, I mean, excluding NXT, of course. Right. So, uh, now that we've gone over that, let's let's uh, let's start talking. Let's talk about uh, NXT really quick. Uh, take over Brooklyn Four. Well, I mean, actually, let's talk about. Um, they did reveal the NXT UK Women's Championship oh, that's right. like two days or yesterday ago, um, and unsurprisingly, it looks almost exactly like the UK title <laughs> and has the exact same like like. Um, Let's see, like, basic shape, shape of every other heavyweight title in the company. Like, seriously, both women's championships, both the Universal Championship and the WWE Championship, the UK Championship, so, and now the UK Women's Championship all have the same shape. So, so here's, so let me ask you this, let me ask you this real quickly, because you, um, again, I have Nikki Cross on the brain. Well, I mean, uh, she could win that because oh, she's yeah. from, Scotland, from Scotland, and yeah. that's part of the UK. UK. Yeah, and then she'd be whooping ass. But you, you, you kind of. But I kind of feel like though that this is almost a secondary. No, no offense to Pete Dunne, who I consider probably the best. One of the, uh, not the best. One of the best. One of the, the best entire WWE, WWE yeah. including NXT. Well, I was gonna say, I was gonna say one of the best wrestlers in all of the world because he's really. really I, 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 Pete I could, Dunn versus Kenny Omega. I can see Pete Dunn against Austin Aries. Oh, I mean, that man, would be a match. That would be a good that, match. Be a good match. Pete I'm, Dunn I, versus Zack Sabre Jr. Zack Sabre Jr., that would be a really be good a match. Crazy I think match. That, uh, but I think that uh, what we're going to do is... Um, but I almost feel like that, that because she's been passed up for the NXT women's title, at least, I mean, what, three times already? Maybe. I mean, she was she she had uh, she, she had, had the one with Oscar, Oscar Shayna Baszler, and um, uh, Ember Moon. Ember or Moon. She, I mean, she had like possibly. a fatal four way yeah, or something but, for the um, championship. I can't remember. It was a while back. So. But I think this is one way of maybe keeping Nikki Cross in the company. She, they, but they, everybody knows how popular she is. Everybody knows how Nikki's gonna kill you. <laughs> and and I think that, um, but I, I don't want this to feel like it's a secondary championship for yeah. her. Yeah, I want her to be able to win the women's championship, and we already know she's going to be part of Evolution, that pay per view. So, yeah. um, in what capacity, I know, but but it, it feels like you know. I mean, Pete Dunne's made a great success out of the UK title. Yeah, and and I defended it pretty much, like, and, and, and multiple promotions. And uh, I can see you know Nikki Cross the same way, holding on to that championship for a long time. Mm -hmm. But um, but I, I would like to see her hold the NXT Women's title. Yeah, and maybe even hold both titles. I mean, that would be absolutely crazy. But it would that be would. it would be it would be great. Um, We've been talking about this a little longer than I thought we would. So uh, let's go That's to break. That's a pretty long intro. Yeah, that was that, like that 10, was, minutes. About 10 minutes. We haven't so, even gotten to like the main topic. Main topic yet, but, we'll, but we will. Let's go to break really quick. When we come back, we're going to talk about uh, NXT TakeOver Brooklyn 4, the results and, and how, what we thought of it. And, uh, and then after that, we'll go to SummerSlam. Now, we're not, now, now, just to let you know, we're not going to talk about every match of SummerSlam. Well, I mean, duh, there was 13, there were 13 matches. Because if we'd be here longer than, than you would like want us to hour. be. Yeah. So there are five, maybe six matches we're going to talk about. Um, and uh, we'll leave it at that some, because there were some certain certainly some surprises mm -hmm. and, and some things that actually really upset us. Oh, no so, kidding. So when we come back from this, we're going to talk about uh, NXT Brooklyn 4. Yeah. Yes. And uh, we'll see you on Goose. I am Logan. Our sponsors are Adios Bell Bonds because... Uh, jail food sucks. <laughs> we'll be back right after this.
Introducing the new California State Penitentiary Bologna Sandwich. Jail food sucks. Don't let your family eat jail food. Hi, did you enjoy that? Uh, that was Machine Gun Baby, my buddies at, uh, at Hectic Films, Ricky Bird. Uh, they are pre premiering that movie this coming Friday, this Friday, the 31st, at Project O. If you want your tickets, uh, they're $5. If you want to get a, a ticket and a DVD, that's $15. To check them out on their Facebook page and uh, just let them know, hey, I want a ticket. And uh, I'm sure they got a link somewhere that you want to you wanna check out. You're about to yawn on me. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. It doesn't matter how much coffee I drink during the day, I'm still gonna end up yawning. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna so look so like I said, let's talk about uh NXT Brooklyn four because if we saw this we were like Oh my god. You watched it. I watched it with you. Oh cool. We no, were you didn't Yeah, I well, I watched most I watched most of it. I was working oh, while he was watching it. Yeah. And I'm kinda like doing this over Trying to figure out what he's like. What's going on? <laughs> anyway, so 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 uh, let's let's start off. First of all, let's start off with the tag team tag team titles. Uh, that was undisputed this was era. Amazing. With against Mustache Mountain, and uh, these guys. This is their third match together. Me? Oh yeah. Wait. Maybe fourth. Fourth. Third. Yeah, they had before. Like They're fourth that. because they took because the titles. Because they had the one at the Royal Albert Hall. They had the rematch, and now they have the that one. Yeah, so, so. That's three. And and here's the thing: because undisputed era. First of all, what did somebody say about undisputed era? That they're the greatest. Stable of all time. The greatest faction of all time. Greatest stable. Are you people high? Hashtag. Only been watching wrestling for one year. <laughs> Uh, obviously, they don't know about what the Four Horsemen and the NWO, Fabulous Freebirds, Fabulous Freebirds, even the New Day. The seriously, New Day, yeah. they're sleeping on them. Yeah, like seriously, they've been around for over two years, uh, and they have like three uh, amazing wrestlers. Evolution, I'm, I'm talking so about the popular. Evolution. I'm talking about the yeah. faction at the pay per view. Uh, yeah, you seriously. know the Nexus. The Nexus was a really good faction until they imploded. until they got buried by John Cena. Yeah, but well, if, who doesn't get buried by John Cena? Um, <laughs> but you know, but let's be honest. The Undisputed Era are they're a great tag team. They are a great tag team. But just like the last Takeover um, in Chicago, where Oni and, and Danny came out and just really took it to him. Yeah, that but, was a much faster paced it's, it's match. Not, and, 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 but, in the Mustache Mountain versus UE match, that was a like slower, more technical match. So it was two different styles for the matches, yeah. but it was still crazy good. I mean, you know, and I think what's interesting is is that everybody they're so on the. Um, Undisputed Era bandwagon. And I will say bandwagon because that's what I mean, you are. I um, like the Undisputed Era. I just don't like Adam Cole. Yeah, I, I'm He's not a big fan like, of Adam Cole. Adam Cole, baby! <laughs> Who we'll get to in a minute. <laughs> we'll get to it in a minute. Oh but, but I think what makes, what makes Undisputed Era, what makes um, O'Reilly... 
O'Reilly's the best wrestler in the entire great group. Changed my mind. A Seriously. great technical wrestler. He's amazing. Rod- and brought Roderick Strong. What makes these guys so good is the competition they faced. Yeah. And I mean, Mustache Mountain really took it to them. I wasn't a big Trent Seven guy until I saw that match, and I was yeah. like, and I'm like, oh, you know, he's gonna rip his leg. Off. What? You know, and, Very and of course, guy. and Tyler Bate, I think, who like just recently, is he 20 or 21? He's really yeah, young. 20, 20, yeah, I think he's, he's super like young. About that. And, and so this dude's got like a career, like a 20 year career out of yeah. him. And so, I mean, and it, that was an amazing match. No Undisputed Air holds on to the titles. It wasn't a big surprise. Oh, of course not. And then, of course, what happens, what happens in the end? Out comes the War Raiders. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Beats up the Undisputed Air. And Just... It's going to set up. Um... Oh, by the way, I already told you yesterday that the rumored card for NXT War Games. Two yes. is going to be a War Games match, yes. which I believe for the Tag Team Championships, oh. with Ricochet in the War Raiders versus the Undisputed Era versus British Strong Style, which, if you didn't know, is Pete Dunn, Trent Seven, and Tyler Bay. Tyler Bay, that's going to be it. And let me tell you something. If you I don't know if that's going to top the original, oh but God. that's still going to be a hell of a match. Oh, my God. Last year's War Games was absolutely insane. And then that and then, you got and, some like other amazing matches on yeah, that card. So, like I think you had Andrade Almas versus Drew McIntyre. Yeah, that was that was an amazing. Last match. year's was Seriously, absolutely that crazy. Was crazy paper. But that looks like it's going to be an interesting match. Uh, then uh, now let's go to Adam Cole, baby, okay. against he's uh, had the North American Championship against Ricochet, and of course, what happens? Ricochet wins. And he wins. He took you know, and, but that wasn't without its craziness too. Because I remember that one. Remember that one move Ricochet does a, does the does he was a, doing like a springboard springboard salt type thing, and then Adam Cole. out of nowhere, Adam Cole super kicks him, and you're like, in the, that and, dude's gonna be dead. You really? Oh my how, goodness, that was crazy. How I was long like, did they? Pra- how long do you think they practiced that? Wow, <laughs> I mean, that was absolutely crazy. It was, I mean, he, he, I mean, and of course, a springboard is that's Rick, one of Ricochet's, you know, like featured, featured moves. And he does this, he's flying through the air, all of a sudden, bang, kicks him. And I mean, and I, and I, I and we're all sitting there going, he's dead. It's like if it was Jim Ross, <laughs> good, good God Almighty, he's that man dead. has a family. <laughs> 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 but not a big surprise. I mean, uh, Adam Cole, he sold on that title for, I don't know, three or four months, maybe? Yeah, he actually defended it a lot more than I thought he did. And, uh, Last time I checked, he defended it like 18 times before that defense. And, uh, and that was because of that website I think I've already told you about, yeah. the profightdb.com, yeah. which is a really helpful site if you ever and, want and, to I, and, I, and I tell you something, you know, Adam, Adam Cole, I, you and I both agreed Adam Cole is the weakest link. Of the, of the undisputed era. era, and yet he has all the charisma of that can carry the whole the whole team on his back. Yeah, with the Adam Cole baby. baby. But um, but I'm I'm looking forward to seeing where where that goes from you know uh, from here because I you know that that's gonna get another rivalry going into uh, the next takeover. Yeah. So uh, now let's, let's go to the women's title. Kyrie Sane defeats Shayna Baszler. In the most unique pin I've ever seen in my life. We're like, <laughs> what the hell was that pin? It, it was basically, I mean, if you haven't seen this, basically, Shayna Baszler, what, what's that hold that she calls it? The the Carafuda Clutch? Carafuda Clutch. Puts her in the Carafuda Clutch, who basically knocks out, has knocked out everybody else. Kyrie Sane had gotten out of it earlier in the match. And so she gets into, you know, Ends up getting like you know it was like you know she goes for an insane elbow, Shana kicks her. You know, she's coming down. Shana kicks her in the head, puts on puts on the clutch, and then what does Kyrie Singh do? She rolls over on top of her own head, pinning Baszler to the mat and wins. Or just like I, 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 what? I she looked like Gumby. I mean, just literally just rolled herself over. <laughs> To, to to make that pin and I'm like and we're sitting there going, wait we gotta see that let's back that up yeah exactly <laughs> what I did and and, 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 we're, and we we and it was like wow that was like absolutely kind of unique that was a good match and also it was one of the best matches because you know again Kyrie Sane had beaten Baszler for the May Young Classic 
Um, since then, Baszler, I think he'd beaten her twice. Maybe I don't know. Um, I know she at least beaten her once. And did you see, did you see the interview she had, Baszler had with Charlie in the back after the match? Mm-hmm. Basically, whining and saying she didn't beat me, I lost. Is there a difference? What? <laughs> Hey, she, that she, makes no she sense. She didn't beat me. I lost. Well, no I'm, shit. She's like, I'm still the better fighter. I'm still the... I'm gonna that be, doesn't look like it. You lost the title. Okay? Deal with it. You lost. Yes, she beat you. Mm-hmm. At least now we got a champion that people like. Yeah, that's true. But this also... I mean, again, this, this sets up a dynamic where you, you, now you've got... Um, you, you've got uh, Nikki Cross waiting in the ring, the wings. Bianca Belair is going to ask for a title. Lacey Evans is going to ask for a title shot. You got a lot of people. You know, um, what's what's uh, J- J- Johnny Gargano's wife? Uh, Candice LeRae. Candice, Candice LeRae is going to ask for a title shot. You got all these people now who I think are going to now finally ask for get, trying to get title shots. Mm-hmm. And of course, Shane is going to try and step in and you know make sure nobody else gets it. No kidding. But I think it'll be an interesting little. Um, uh, it'll, it'll be interesting up until you know until the next uh, takeover. We'll see how it works out. All right, two more two more matches. Uh, EC3 and Velveteen Dream. Oh, that was actually a and, and, better match than I and, thought and, it would be. And here's something interesting because we made our picks before it happened, and he went four and one. I went three and two. Yeah. Guess seriously, what, I was like, wow. Guess what? Guess, guess I which I one did. I lost on this one. <laughs> Yeah, so did I. This is the one I lost on. I, I thought EC3 would win, but in the end, Velveteen Dream actually Velveteen won. Dream won. Like, um, and it was kind of a surprise. It, it was a, not, let me rephrase that. The only reason it was a surprise is because Velveteen Dream has lost two um, takeovers in a row. And you, you almost think that he's going to lose this next one. Yeah. Um, EC3, he, just, he was just brought over. You're thinking, you know, he he didn't win the ladder match last time. With these two, you're thinking, okay, at the very least, you think it would come out as a draw. But you know, a Velveteen Dream looked really good. Um, the match was really good. The the interesting thing about it after the match was, um, uh, you said EC3 EC3 had suffered a concussion. I'm not sure if it was a concussion, but it definitely looked like he could have suffered a concussion because he got DDT'd mm-hmm. with like almost like no protection. Whatsoever, onto the metal part of the ramp. I was like, "Oh, dang!" But so, after you, re- he got a big black eye from mm. that match. I was like, "Whoa!" So, um, so even if he did get a con- if he's in concussion, he'll be in concussion pro- co- protocol for a couple of weeks. So. Well, I mean, he did appear on NXT, and, yeah, which I saw yesterday. So. But um, I think this is again. This is also the start of an interesting rivalry between these two. I think it'll this will go on for at least at least until the next maybe couple of takeovers. Yeah, maybe because it, you know it just it, these these two guys really want they want to come up to the main roster. Mm-hmm. So now let's go before we hit to the break. This is the one we really want to talk about. So Tommaso Ciampa and Johnny Gargano. In a last man standing match, this one almost reminds you of the uh, the street fight they had in Chicago. I mean, this it referenced was, like their last two this, matches a lot. I mean, this was brutal. Yeah. I mean, you know, um, tables. It was almost like a TLC match. Tables, ladders, and chairs. Oh my! You know, and handcuffs. And a handcuffs and a, and a bear ring and. <laughs> At one point, you know, Champa like just like drove Gargano through the barricade oh my gosh. and buried him. And he used a chair. With everything he could find. And even he put a dude over him. I'm just like, I feel bad for that <laughs> oh, man. Oh, just like for Oh, poor Johnny. Yeah, poor Johnny. Yeah, I don't want to say poor Johnny Gargano, but he was like, he's he goes to super kick Champa. And it's like, oh, and Ciampa, then he hits the guy. <laughs> I was like, oh. Oh, man. Oh. Oh. And of course, God, God was like, "Oh, damn!" <laughs> He's like, you know. And of course, that's when that's when he gave Champa the, the the opportunity to get up, grab a chair, and knock him through the barricade. That was crazy because he just he threw chairs and 
you know, barricades and the dude on top of guard gun. I was like, whoa. You're, you're like, overdoing it much? Wow. I'm thinking, you know, he really does not want him to get off. The, but it was like, he gets a nine, and of course, Gargano, Gargano gets to his feet. Um, this was a this was a crazy miss. You, oh, yeah. It was it was actually interesting because one of the things that we were we were watching it. You you looked at the time and you went, oh my god, it's fifty some. Was it? Fit? I'm not sure if it was that long. But, but it was like it I was, was still. It made the most out of the time it had. It, it did. It was like you know, um, if you haven't heard, and I guess again we we got a chance to watch it. If you haven't watched NXT Takeover, go to Hulu. And uh, you can see the uh, NXT takeover on um, the NXT. Yeah, because WWE lies to you when they say it's only on the WWE Network. And, and as a like, matter of fact, if you just wait a day after, you'll be able to see you it on Hulu. You can get it. Yeah, on Hulu. On Hulu. Um, but let's let's talk about that knee injury that Gargano suffered. That looks real nasty. Yeah. Okay. Explain how it happened. Okay. So. Um, how it happened was they were on the ramp and um, Ciampa had gotten handcuffed. And, of course, he's like begging for his life. And Gargano like, was, Johnny, I'm sorry. After about two or three super kicks in the head, he, he, he rears back. He runs at him. He knees him. And then on the other side was, I guess, like what you would call it. And he like, a, his momentum I would, made him fly, fly into like this stack of. It, boxes it was like a, it's, a, it's a, what it's what's known in the industry as a prop box, and it's what they that's what they maybe would keep lights or cords or whatever it is that they, they do to to put the show up. And Gargano hits this thing full force with his knee. It's, it's his knee is exposed because he's pulled the thing off. He's pulled the, the knee pad off. He hits this thing, bam, and then he rolls over, and you can see that what looks like possibly his kneecap is like pushed. To the side of his leg. It is swollen. It is big. He tries to get up. He cannot straighten his right leg. And it looked like he tried several times. to. Like, he's whacking it. He's trying to move it. He's trying to stand up. Nothing's happening. This, this looked nasty. He could not stand up. He couldn't straighten the right leg. He could not stand up. Once, and what was interesting was, you could, all, you could almost see it because when the referee hit nine and Ciampa stood up on the other side... It was like he stood up, he looked over, and there's Gargano on the ground. And he's kind of like, huh? And he was kind of half expecting Gargano to be standing there. And when he wasn't, at the end of the match, and immediately um, they brought everybody over. I mean, they brought, you could tell he was seriously injured. And everybody came over. And what's interesting was, is because if you remember how Chicago ended, where, you know, Champa's being wheeled up the ramp in the in the gurney, and here comes Gargano, bam, 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 yeah. bam. You would have thought, okay, he's down on the ground. Champa's going to beat the crap. And Champa just he takes his title, he goes to the back, he comes back out, shows it again, goes back, and it's like, even he was kind of like, oh, he's he's screw, he's screwed. Um, this looks like it's a pretty serious injury. If it's anything like Tommaso Champa's knee injury. I think Gargano's out at least nine months. I, I, I'm not sure if it's going to be that long. But. I mean, well, we'll see. I mean, it it looked pretty. I don't know how long. I mean, they think Tommaso Ciampa was out for a year wow. when he injured his knee. I don't know. We'll see. We haven't gotten any news of the severity of the injury, but it was bad. Uh, and they reported shortly afterwards that he dislocated his knee. And it looked really bad. Um, so... Johnny, if you're out there, take your time getting healthy, please, yeah. uh, because this one took took the snot out of you. Um, what did you think when you saw it? That was nasty. I was like, whoa. Didn't expect it to look that bad or, like, that, like, crazy of a way to dislocate it, like, freaking fly mm -hmm. and hit a box. I was like, whoa. That was crazy. That was crazy. All right, let's go to our break. And now we're going to talk about some of the matches at That's SummerSlam. SummerSlam. We'll be right back after this. I'm Goose. I am Logan. Our sponsors are Audios Bail Bonds because... Jail Food Sauce. We'll be right back after this.
At the time you were arrested, you were served with a DS-367 temporary driver's license. It's good for 30 days, but if you don't act within 10 days, at the end of those 30 days, your license will be suspended. It's important for your lawyer to contact the DMV for you, set up a driver's license administrative hearing so that your license is not going to suspension. That's something here at Brain Law we do for you. With wrestling superstars, it's like having a real match right in your own home. Yes, there's Jimmy Whee! Superfly Suka. The Iron Sheik. Hulk Hogan. And Big John Studd. And now you can fly them and flip them in the Swing them, Swing them wrestling ring. Wrestling superstars and new wrestling ring, each sold separately from LJN. Hey, kid. Introducing the new California State Penitentiary Bologna Sandwich. Jail food sucks. Don't let your family eat jail food. And we're back. All right. So if you didn't notice, we played an old, old uh, wrestling toys commercial there for you. We're going to see if we can find more and more throwback com wrestling commercials for you to see because I kind of think they're kind of fun to watch. And uh, it kind of breaks the monotony of seeing the same ads over and over again. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, we see them all the time. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Especially on Nick when you, like, see the freaking... Lucky Charms <laughs> unicorn. And just like, can you stop? And don't forget that juicy drop gum commercial. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Those are like the like epitome of infuriation. Infuriating <laughs> ads you see all the time. I'm just like. <laughs> Right. Well, let's. <laughs> we're having too much fun here. All right, let's let's talk about SummerSlam. We're we're not going to talk about all of the matches, but we're, we well, there are a few on our list that we're going to go over. Let's start with, of course, let's start with the main match. Everybody's talking about that. Everybody thought was going to be absolutely garbage. Bo garbage, and that was Lesnar Reigns four. four. Lesnar Reigns four. Um, like was not surprised. Was <laughs> that's not like a movie. Let's see you. Lesnar Reigns for the coming. Oh, <laughs> uh, here we go. The last chapter. The, the, last chapter. <laughs> the final spear. <laughs> Anyway, I was, I mean, here's the thing. It, it had been rumored for months, not, not, not weeks, months, months, ever since, ever since before. Like the greatest Royal Rumble? Like the, yeah, or? even before then. It was really? like, you know, and even at the WrestleMania, they said that, that Reigns is going to defeat Lesnar and bring the, and it was like, okay. When, you know, it was just like when. Everybody's like, just, just waiting, I, just like, okay. We're waiting. We're waiting. Just like, God damn it! Can I get a lose the title? <laughs> yes, he just did say that. I'm sorry. Anyway, <laughs> sorry, but saying my thoughts. Yeah. Anyway, so this was actually the right time to to finally give Reigns the, the title because we everybody's been complaining that Lesnar has held on to that thing. He's not defended it. Is he's become? I would I would even say he's almost become a paper asterisk kind of champion because yeah. because he's never really defended it and here reigns he, he finally gets he finally gets the title and we thought for sure that you know Braun Strowman was going to cash in he even came out and said on commentary yeah and, I saw that and we're like okay he's going to cash in and then he did Not. nothing he didn't do it at all got really. his butt kicked if you, know, you didn't see that. Oh, good grief. It was absolutely just it's just absolutely crazy. And then he's like, I'm gonna cash it in tomorrow night. And we're like, Okay. Thank and you for telling thank you for telling us. <laughs> was going to and then like right before the match was going to start, here comes Seth Rollins yeah. and Dean Ambrose in their shield uniforms. I'm I'm just like What? Yeah. yeah. 
That was pretty much the way. Well, I mean, everybody knows what it was for. It's to get Reigns over. I mean, the shield was so over. They figured that if they bring the, the shield. shield back, it's going to get Reigns over. But, I mean, it's kind and of a waste of this. But, I mean, it's so cool to see him it, back It is together, nice to see him back together. It's still kind of it's, a it's, waste. It's kind of working. Of it's kind of working. More and more people are starting to embrace Reigns. And they're, 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 and he first he came out on Raw. He says I'm a defending champion tonight. I'm going to defend it against Finn Balor. It was a great, that was a good match, great match. Um, you know, and, and again, eventually Finn Balor will get that title back. But mm-hmm. it's just, and, and once Vince McMahon decides to take his head out of his ass, or he dies, yeah, we either either. I'm or, sorry, just know, had to say. It. You know, because you know, let's just be real. Finn Balor is a, 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 a deserving wrestling champion. Uh, they may think he only deserves an IC title, or you know, but I think he he's a deserving universal champion. Anyway, uh, moving on from there. So it's good to see that the the the, the, the belts finally around someone who will defend it on Raw. I'm the big dog. Um, it will we'll see where it goes from there. But I'm looking forward to seeing finally seeing the the championship. You know. On Raw. On Raw. Now, that's Every good. week. Now, now, of course, now we just kind of did a spoiler because we said that, you know, and if you all already know, you know, Braun Strowman held on to the, held on and beat Kevin Owens in two minutes. <laughs> Less than two <laughs> Less minutes. Less than two minutes. That was the biggest waste of time in my Rest life. Rest in peace, Kevin Owens I, shirt. Oh, my good grief. I was like, oh, come on. That, that was, was a good shirt. That was the, that was a waste of time. Everybody was expecting a good match, but nope, no. squash match. They're treating Kevin Owens like garbage. They're pushing yeah. him off a stage in El Porta Potty. Now he's getting beat in under two, two minutes, minutes for a high stakes match. And this was one of the matches I was actually looking forward to because you know that with all the hijinks that Kevin Owens could have done to try to get your know, Braun disqualified or counted out or whatever, and instead, you know. Braun Strowman runs him over and slams, you know, choke slams him, and then it's done. And I'm, and this, it was a waste. It was a waste of time. Why bother? Why bother building this whole thing up if you were just gonna like crap on it? Yeah. Uh, uh, you serious? Jeez. I, 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 you know, I, again, someone in the back just must, you know. Somebody in the back just has a vendetta against Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens, and you know, who knows? Maybe, maybe we'll get lucky and and uh, they'll they'll put him in something that he's actually worth doing. Please. Oh, please, dear God. Okay, let's start now. Let's go to the triple threat for the SmackDown Women's title. Uh, Becky Lynch versus Charlotte versus Carmella. We're happy to know, we're happy to report Carmella no longer has the belt. Carmella is Thank no God. longer money. Yeah, she's... Thank goodness. Um, were, were you surprised what happened? Because I was kind of a little surprised. What are you talking about? Charlotte? Charlotte? Yeah, well, Charlotte. Or not Becky a, turning heel. No, it, well, here's the thing. Becky has Carmella in the, just arm her. Oh, and then Charlotte and then here comes hits Char- the natural hits, selection. Hits the natural selection. Natural. One, two, three. It's over. And I'm like, you're, you're not, you're not going to make Becky Lynch your, 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 your champion? I'm like, you have her, like, getting... Like weeks upon weeks of momentum, yeah, and then all for it to be crapped on <laughs> by the only two weeks returned Charlotte. Charlotte. You're like, what? Yeah, I was. Then what's the point of having Becky get all this momentum only to lose to a person who's only been back for like did, two, three weeks? Did you buy the heel turn? I, I guess I, I don't know. I, I mean, I didn't even see that segment of SmackDown because I had to. Yeah, I like, I didn't buy. Something. First of all, I mean, let's let's. I I didn't buy the heel turn at SummerSlam. Hmm. I thought this was another. Let's be honest. I thought there was another. This was another Sasha Bailey moment. Two friends who are frustrated with each other and beating the crap out of each other. And it's I gonna thought, be a. Nice little tag team. And the, yeah, <laughs> and, and uh, you, you figure, oh, I'm sorry, oh, I got frustrated, oh, let's fog it out, and and, and and of course you realize, no, they already did that on Raw, and it, it, we can already tell you it sucks because we don't buy it, we don't buy yeah. that the Sasha. Maybe they are friends, but. Come on, everybody still just wants to see Bailey versus Sasha Banks. They don't want to see a 
<laughs> Boston hug. Thank you for not saying it too loud. <laughs> Seriously, I mean, oh nobody my... wants to see it. And and I I don't buy the I didn't buy the heel turn when she came out and she started saying that you fans you didn't root for me you didn't cheer for me I'm like well, I'm, I'm like I did. Um, ex- uh, <laughs> everybody was rooting for, for you. Everybody wanted you to win. Everybody I think WWE screwed the pooch on this. I think it should have been the other way around. I think that it should have oh, been Becky Char- winning and Charlotte, Charlotte turning heel. heel. I think that yeah, would have that would have made more sense because that it would have been more better story. It would have made a better storyline. Instead, you have well, you know, Charlotte doesn't have a Charlotte doesn't really have a, a heel opponent to go up against. So let's uh, let's turn Becky heel. No, no, let's not. Let's do it the other way. Let's do it the other. Let's give Becky the title, and and, and Charlotte goes. Oh, I'm the rightful owner of that belt. I'm the queen. That's how you should have done it. Who who? I'm, who back there is writing this crap? It's road dog. <laughs> Did you not know that? It's crap. This is crap. Okay, stop. Just stop. I'm pretty sure it's Road Dog House Man. Oh, I'm pretty good. Sure. oh my god. Sorry for the for anybody who got offended with the but that's kind of how I feel. It's like you guys you're not thinking this thing through the long term. You're not thinking the long term through this. Okay? Okay? All right. <laughs> now let's go, now let's go I want to go to Finn Balor and Baron Corbin. Okay. I find it stupid that they had a better match on Raw than they had at SummerSlam. No kidding! They <laughs> could have had a great match because if you saw what they did on Raw, they could have had an even better match. They like People would actually, like, whoa, didn't expect that. Mm-hmm. But instead, we got a squash match... I'm just like, what's the point? What? I don't understand. It's the you. same thing with the Kevin Owens and Braun Strowman. I don't understand. The, what's the point in even having it if you're first, just going to have a squash match? See, I, I don't understand it either because you, you build up these superstars and then you crap on them. Yeah. And, and you, you build them up and then, okay, we're gonna you're going to be squashed in a match. And, 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 you know, first of all, I, it makes no sense to to me. I'm sure it makes no sense to the superstar. But what are they? It's like, well, I'm crying, well I might as well. Okay. It, it makes so. I don't understand. And I agree with you. I mean, they, they they built this thing up for like weeks, and they could have built this thing up further into the next pay per view, into the you know into Survivor Series coming. Instead, hey, I'm gonna we're gonna make Baron Corbin look totally weak. And let, and let me just tell you, Bear Corbin's, a, I mean, in my opinion, I don't like his character, but he's a Go badass. Go back to his old gimmick. Go back to the lone wolf, please. And just to say, I was actually re- looking forward to that match. Yeah. Finn Balor versus Baron Corbin, because I was like, they had a really good match on Raw. They can do better on SummerSlam. I was yeah. like, I want to see this match. But, I mean, of course, we did buy SummerSlam. It's so. kind of a rare instance where they decide that they're going to put the better match on television rather than the pay per view. Yeah, I, it doesn't make sense. Now let's go. Let's uh, let's go to the pre show. Uh, no, 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 no. No, I no. want to talk about uh, the revival of the B team. That was on the pre show. Oh, was that on the pre show? My mistake. That's why I just said that I was <laughs> going to that match. My mistake. I didn't realize it was on the. I didn't. I didn't think. I didn't. I forgot it was on the pre show. I thought it, they don't really care about the Raw Tag Team Division they, anymore. No. Um, now let's be honest because you and I both rooted for Bo Dallas and Curtis Axel to get a push. We didn't want them to get this kind of push. That's yeah, just this annoying. is uh, to to oh I accidentally rolled over and, and pinned you know Do, uh, D- Scott Dawson and oh we won the tag team title and now and of course now they have the most lame theme theme of anybody please go back <laughs> to their old theme that was an enjoyable one everybody's like battle scars you know I mean I, li- I liked it I mean you know it's, it, their new theme sounds like a college fight team B team B team go 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 and now we're sitting there going yeah B team B team go 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 <laughs> go away please Shoot, go away. I, I would have preferred I would have preferred 
Axel and Dallas to get a decent, a, a legitimate push. This makes them look like weak guys that are getting lucky. Yeah. And we in the universe do not like this kind of writing. We don't like this kind yeah. of matches. We I think other people are starting to get tired of this. Because, I mean, I know I am, and I'm starting to see it, like, on Instagram and the comment section yeah. on this kind of post. I'm just like, at least I'm not the only one. Yeah, it's it's becoming a little disgusting. Okay, before we go out, because we're a little bit over time. I just want to say, like, now that we got to see the Revival in the like, revival? singles action, they have the coolest finishers I have seen mm-hmm. in a long time. Like, I, I I'm becoming a very, very big fan of the Revival. They remind me a lot of uh, the Brain Busters, Anderson and, uh, and Blan- uh, you know, Tully Blanchard and Arn Anderson. Uh, these guys are old school type wrestlers that just go in there and then they just beat the crap out of you. Um, before we go, before we go, uh, there's one more match. I'm trying to remember what, which one it was that we were going to talk about. Rollins and Ziggler? Uh, th- let's talk Rollins and Ziggler. You were pretty upset. I was like, why did he lose? <laughs> Come on. Sucks. You know, I mean, I wanted him to retain. I'm, I'm a Ziggler fan. I'm a McIntyre fan. I'm glad they're together. But I mean, it also kind of sucked that sucks that McIntyre's just now he's just Ziggler's sidekick. He's not getting any kind of push of his own. Push. Which sucks because he is one of the best wrestlers on so, the so, brand. So let's let, let's look ahead really quick too, because Raw actually has in, in Survivor Series. Raw has the team. I mean, if you look at the team that they can put together, and, and, and let's take you know now that, that now that Reigns has the title, Reigns has the title, so he won't be a part of the team for Survivor Series. Hmm. So let's look at Survivor the, the Raw Survivor Series team: McIntyre, Strowman, Lashley. Ziggler, uh, Rollins. How are you? Going? Rollins has the Intercontinental Championship, so he's not going to. He might. He, yeah, he may not have it either. But then it would or be, Elias, maybe. I would say Finn Balor. Finn Balor, yes. Yes, I mean that would be. I mean that would. Be, first of all, you have three big guys who would probably beat each other up. But then with 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 um, with Ziggler and and. Balor, I mean that team. I don't care who you put up uh, up on SmackDown. Um, you don't have anybody big enough, really, on SmackDown to take those those guys on. And I think it's going to be. Oh, I mean, except for like Luke Harper and Rowan, but Rowan, I mean, Rowan's hurt. Rowan Rowan's had hurt. a bicep tear. Yeah, so Rowan's out. Yeah, for that's a while. the injury. If you didn't know, so you know maybe you know Luke Harper will probably you know, but. Um, I think it, I'm right now. I'm looking at SummerSlam. I'm Summer, yeah, I'm looking at uh, Survivor Series. I'm looking at that team. And I'm like, the, I, I don't see how Raw is going to lose. Yeah, I really don't. Um, unless of course they're gonna, they screw it up, which wouldn't surprise me any again anyway. All right, before we head on out, let's hit let's let's hit the let's hit the, the stop button on this thing. Anything else you want to talk about before we head on out? I don't think so. Okay, wrestling fans, we'll be back next Monday at 4 o'clock. The same wrestling time, same wrestling channel here on KernCast.com. And uh, the, here at the Bakersfield Music Hall of Fame, uh, I'm Goose. I am Logan. We're the Wrestling Boys brought to you by Adios Bell Bonds because... Jail food sucks. Okay, we'll see you next week.